this is the chosen one. I'm doing a video about Chris Benoit. Okay. Now I got five things here. It's not a tribute right now. I'll probably do that later on. But right now, let's talk about every aspect of Chris Benoit, including the murders and doubles, the murders and suicide. All right. Now on June 25th, uh, 2007. They found the bodies of Nancy Benoit, Daniel Benoit, and Chris Benoit in the Georgia home. Apparently it was a murder-suicide, a murder, double murder-suicide. Now, that was probably the worst thing I've heard in a long time. Because I, I, I always respected Benoit. I was never like, I mean, I was a fan of Benoit, but I wasn't like a super, super Benoit fan, you know? But... Anyway, talking about the events that occurred, Chris Benoit, the wrestler now. Chris Benoit was probably one of the greatest technical wrestlers of all time. And there were so many accolades he accomplished and a lot of stuff he accomplished in his time in WWE, WCW, you know, the little stint in ECW, Japan, all over the world, you know, he wrestled. And... It's just, it's a tragic, tragic event that happened. And what, what's the thing about it is we really, to be honest with you, you really don't know what happened. Because we wasn't there when what one of the people that did what happened. Now, what I want to move on to is steroids and painkillers. Now, they said they found ten times the testosterone, or seven times, the, or whatever, levels of testosterone in his system. It's a lot. Plus, he was on steroids. You could tell he was on steroids. And he also failed a, well, a, a wellness program. So, you know, look that way. But he also had neck surgery and a lot of injuries he had to come back from and stuff like that. Now, history. Yes, Chris Benoit should stay in the history books forever and ever. And as one guy quoted, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little thing here before I get to the last thing, which is the big, the big thing. I want you to comment on that. What I'm business say, but somebody asked what it said about Chris Benoit in the uh, WWE Encyclopedia. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now what it said about it. Right. Let me just find him here. I know he's in here. I saw him. He's got a little half bottom page for him. But I mean, Chris Benoit was was probably one of the best wrestlers to ever step foot in the uh, in the ring. So, yeah, I think he he needs to stay in the history books because of what he did. Uh, I got another book I want to promote to himself. So it's good. It's, it's a good story about a wrestler that a lot of people have heard of and a lot of people haven't. Right, here's the Chris Benoit encyclopedia set. There he is in the encyclopedia right there. Okay, now I'm going to read what it says in the encyclopedia. When Chris Benoit was 12 years old, he saw the Dynamite Kid perform in the ring. At that moment, he dedicated himself to building his body for a career in sports entertainment after graduating high school. In 1985, Chris pursued his dreams of every week, drove almost 200 miles in train in Stu Hart's famous dungeon. Benoit worked tirelessly to learn the Scared art for the emulate the to emulate the dynamite kid. All right, but and it tells about some of his WCW time, and it tells and you know he made his debut in 2000 at the and everything. And he is Benoit remained uh, even after Randy Orton beat him at SummerSlam, he remained a top contender for many of WWE's renowned championships. Doesn't mention his death. Or the murder suicides in there, which is I think good. I also promoted this book the other day. They told me there was another book, Ring of Hell, the Chris Benoit story, and the fall of pro wrestling industry. Now this is the book. I'm going to get back to the Chris Benoit thing. The the top debate of the Chris Benoit thing that I'm doing this far right now. But I also wanted to promote this book. It's a good book. If you've never heard of Bruiser Brody, you need to buy Brody. And read this book. He was a 
a real rebel in the wrestling business. He was the first, I mean, one of the guys that pioneered being so bad, it was cool to be bad. He was probably one of the first. And he was stabbed to death by another wrestler in Puerto Rico. Now, you can look this up on the internet or whatever, and you can find different stories. Tony Atlas has got a story that doesn't even compare to the one that was told. So I don't, you know, you so much stuff being tossed around, you don't even know what the truth is. So you just gotta look at. It. All right, my last and final thing here with the Chris Benoit story is: Should Chris Benoit be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame? Should he? Please comment. I want to get as many comments on this. Should Chris Benoit be inducted into the Hall of WWE Hall of Fame? One day, not, I'm not talking about next year, the year after that, I'm talking about one day. Now, Eddie Guerrero, I liked Eddie Guerrero, I thought he was great, but they abused when he died. They abused that when he died. Let Rey Mysterio win the World Heavyweight Championship, you know, just, and I, I know Ray is a good athlete, but he's not a World's Heavyweight Champion. And to put the title on him, just didn't like I didn't like how he won the Royal Rumble. Hell, my grandma could have come in there and threw him over. But that's just me. I'm not a big Ray Mysterio fan. I like Ray, but I'm not a big Ray Mysterio fan. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there. But should Chris Benoit be inducted to the Hall of Fame? Let me know what you think. This is the chosen one and I'm out of baby.